Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, all the commissioners are here, I believe. Thank you for being here this morning and joining us for this work session. Um, clerk, um, public comment. We really didn't have anyone to sign up. We do have a rule about public comment. I want to just reiterate what it means. It's 10 minutes. You sign up 10 minutes before the work session. And if you don't sign up, we definitely, I don't make exceptions uh, to the rule because that means I have to bend the rule for everyone else. So we're going to move on to presentations. We have Amerisco first. Amerisco is Mr. James Worthington. If you could please come up. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. So for my presentation, <laughs> Senior Project Manager for Amerisco, <laughs> Jay Lockhart. Yeah. He's going to give you the update. <laughs> <laughs> Quick. Quick item there. All right, well, uh, everybody, well, uh, thank you for coming. My name is Justin Locker, and I'm a senior PM with Amoresco. We're doing the energy project for all of Douglasville. Um, right now, uh, based off our cons uh, current construction, we are 95% complete with the job. Um, the contract date is to be done in October, so I'm looking with everything to try to be done by the middle of next month. The one item hanging out there is working with the IT department to pull in all the energy management systems. And what that is, is those are the systems that control the heat and air for all the buildings where we installed it. So um, we hope to have that done here in the next three or four weeks. Um, outside of that, all the invoices have been paid. It's been a wonderful job with the county. Everybody's been great to work with. And uh, that's, that's with the speed of my my project and my presentation. <laughs> oh, wow, okay. Uh, Board Commissioners, anyone have a question? Vice Chairman Robinson, I believe you have a question. Yeah, uh, uh, Director Worthy, come back to the, the front. Yes, sir. Please give context on what this is, because everybody didn't follow okay. it, so this is the conclusion of the initiative. This is what's been about a two, three year initiative. Can you give them context so they sure. can see why this is coming to a close? Uh, so this is a um, energy <coughs> art and savings program that the Amoresco did a, a, a long-term audit of all the county facilities and, and worked out a program to upgrade a lot of the infrastructure, including lighting, plumbing, some HVAC, controls, irrigation. <coughs> There's a lot of different measures that go into it. And to pay for that, the energy savings will offset the cost. So there's, it's a net zero for the county. Um, it's a 15-year program. The savings um, is guaranteed by Amoresco. If the savings don't match, they'll fund the difference. So it's a guaranteed net zero for the county. So real quick, how many square feet, how many buildings, how much money? Just uh, This was ended up being 20, 23 buildings. And I don't know the actual square footage between all of those. It would be probably in the 300,000 square feet range um, and the two and a half million dollars worth of work. When we first started, we, we talked about a half million square feet from 33 buildings. So evidently the scope had changed, I guess, once y'all got in there and it did not include the jail. Is that correct? That is correct. Mm -hmm. okay. mm -hmm. Um, so, so now are they, the last question then I'll, I'll yield to my, my colleagues. You've replaced all the heating and bathrooms and lights and so forth through the build, um, throughout the county that was much needed. I mean, we know that um, not by intentional negligence, but we just, as a county, didn't take care of that type of stuff, right? Um, this administration, um, and again, this started in the prior one, but we did finish it. I, I want to give proper credit that we started down that path because we knew how important it was that the county just really did not, it doesn't focus on maintenance. Like our roads, our buildings, it just, it was just a philosophy to just, it, it's, it is what it is. But you have to invest. You have to take tax dollars and you have to put it back in. It doesn't get better by default, no more different than your bodies, your minds, or anything else. You have to spend time, you have to maintain. And so this was an important project um, that was undertaken. I, I think it was a unanimous understanding, um, at least enough to get it down the path, at least a majority. But that being said, um, now you talked about this master control, and that's something I, I can't let go. So you're at the very end, and there's some type of control mechanism that's supposed to pull all the 
it, it tells you what this building is. I mean, I guess it's a Lexus for all of our county buildings. You can tell heating and air for every building and how to turn it on, turn it off. I mean, what, what's the problem? And, and what does that mean? Uh, he said that. I'm not so, yeah, go ahead. Okay. Uh, one of the main things is the security because we have to get a server into your IT department. Okay. And with that, we want to make sure that no one else can broach or break into that EMS system and get it into your system. So that's why we're working with your IT department to separate this from your whole IT system. This is going to be its own standalone system. The server's here, and what the server does is we have at each of the buildings, there's a small controller, computer, like a laptop. Yep. It has all the graphics on it, every, controls everything to certain times of day, temperatures, and with outside air t uh, sensors. It'll tell how hot it is outside, what the temperature needs to be outside, <coughs> control dampers, air coming into the building. And then when you're not there after 9 o'clock, 10 o'clock in the evening, it'll go to an unoccupied. So you're not air conditioning or heating all your, I mean, 24 hours a day, seven days a week, like you would do, you know, I do it in my home. So this would kind of keep that from happening because uh, nobody's in the building. So the server takes all the data that's there because we get, we're guaranteeing this to you guys and it pulls it back into the server so we can, we're going to assist you guys as part of the project to monitor this to make sure that in fact, what we told you we were going to give you, we have hard documentation for that. I don't want we, you know, nobody, I can say I promise it, but I want to be able to show you minute by minute, 365 days a year, that this data is in fact doing what we told you it would. All right, I'm, I'm going to finish with um, Director Hall. Let's make sure we double back and I want to measure our bills based on what we signed up for. We'll take it offline the committee. And lastly, um, Commissioner Mitchell, if you weigh in, can you make sure you talk about this IT thing? I sort of need your insight on that, um, of what he just talked about, Madam Chair. Okay, thank you so much, uh, Vice Chairman Robinson. Um, Oh, Mr. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you want to <laughs> I got you. My bad. Um, I got a couple of questions, though. Um, yes, sir. Also, was not included was the boundary waters pool and all that stuff, correct? It, it was it, honestly it was, but it there was or was not. It was it was pulled out. Yes, that has been pulled out for the reason okay. Okay. Um, that you guys recently <laughs> put in a new energy management That's system. Right. So the funding for that is being, we're, we're working on a change order to allocate those funds to other energy savings projects because the EMS system you have in is exactly what we would have put in, right? So you, we, we're we gonna be working with you guys shortly to gain access to it so we can make sure that the temperatures and everything that you guys are utilizing match our savings and then the funds that were allocated to that, 100% of that is gonna go to other energy savings projects. So when we did the audit for this job, we looked at every single building, and we looked at tons of different energy management systems, or I wanted to, we call them EMS, that's lighting, water, controls, irrigation. And so that money is still yours, but the new system in would be, I guess it won't, would be a bad idea for me to pull your new system out and put one in exactly like you already have. But the chlorine system right. was removed. From the project, there, but there were other things. Correct. Okay. That's what I'm saying. Answer your question. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, so the chlorine system. Okay. Yeah. We, we don't. We're not controlling the chlorine. We weren't going to control the chlorine system. Right. Uh, the, so the, those funds will pull it out. Yes. Okay. And, yeah. and renegotiate it. But okay. But you speaking of something else? Because I was. Really <laughs> thank you for. Your okay. Time. I apologize. I misunderstood. That's okay. Sorry about that. <laughs> I, thought, I thought that was changed though. But okay. Good. So yes, but you, you're doing everything else outside of the, the pool. <clears throat> for uh, boundary water when it comes to parks and rec. Yes. Um, you talk about, is, is this an annual savings of this whole makeup of roughly $2 million or that's the overall? It, so, yes. <laughs> uh, it's it's going to be measured annually. Okay. And the annual guarantee was, I don't remember the exact number, but it's between 100 and, it's around 175000 a year. So, they're guaranteeing we'll save 175,000 a year, roughly. Mm -hmm. um, and then th that money will pay for these upgrades that we've kind of financed out. Mm -hmm. So it'll, it'll be a net zero over a 15 year period. 
Okay, that was my other question. So it's a 15 year <coughs> makeup. Okay, right. so, the, so the two million is not, that's an overall number, that's not a drop up. Because I, I was gonna say, I didn't think it was a, a $2 million savings annually, but. <laughs> Correct. Over the life of the project. I, I got you, yes. I got you. I got you, but when I, when I first heard it, I was like, okay, that would be really nice if this is true, but I wanna make sure that oh, we say the same thing. But well, I, I can add that after that 15 year mark and everything's paid, mm -hmm. we'll continue those savings. Mm -hmm. And that'll just be a, a bonus to the county. Got it, got it. You know, so as long as the infrastructure holds up that last 10 extra years, that, that could be potentially $2 million more. Got it, got it, okay, all right. Okay, and I guess eventually we'll get the building, the whole makeup, you know, some kind of spreadsheet of some sort that we can kind of see this on a quarterly, annually, however it looks as, as we go through this entire process. And every year we provide an annual report, the savings analysis mm -hmm. with the backup documentation I was speaking about with the EMS system. Mm -hmm. And then at the end of this project, I give a line by line, which is, I said I was gonna change out 5,000 lights. Mm -hmm. And I actually changed out 7,000. I always end up changing out more mm -hmm. um, than what we calculated. And you'll be able to see those, the lighting and the water, the, 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 the savings of what you're supposed to get for like a kilowatt or a kWh. You'll be able to see that, or gallons per minute. Mm -hmm. You'll be able to see that here shortly when I, when I find out, finalize the final documentation to give to you guys. Then after that, yearly, we're going to give you a report, a savings report. Got it. Yes, and, sir. And at least if the number's correct, 100 plus annually is a, is a, is a goal. Mm -hmm. Correct. And, you know, if, if not, if the savings is not there, then you'll, you know, supply the difference. Yeah, we, we guarantee it. So we're, 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 we're pretty good with our calculations after you've been for 20, 20 plus years. So, uh, you know, like I said, we guarantee it. Mm -hmm. Based off what I'm seeing at this moment, yeah, you, should, you will definitely get that. Not a question. Mark. Could that number ever be greater than mm -hmm. Yes. So yes, what happened with the greater than George spread? So, okay. George, we don't we don't do shared savings. Okay. Like some other companies that do shared savings where we do, you know, if you're ten thousand dollars over, we get five, you get five, but now we don't do that. We just it's your additional savings. Got it. So yeah. if you control it differently, you can gain more savings. So but okay. And, and that will be an annual makeup though, it won't be the quarterly makeup. It'll be an annual. So <coughs> Every year is what the number will look at to see the savings or not, correct? At the end of the year, or, or is it? So we will check it annually, and the guarantee is done annually. Yeah, that's so what I'm looking the for. The savings will be, they're ongoing. We're saving already. I'm saving. We've already changed it so much. I understand. So, but I was, just, I, I was concerned, not concerned, but my question, though, is going to the annually at that 123 or whatever that number you it's, it's about 175. Okay, 175. So that number is what I'm alluding to. Annually, we'll look at that number because throughout the month, <coughs> there may be some ups and downs. Exactly. Right, correct. And, and where we end up is with that, that, that 175 number, whether we end up with 200 or 125, somebody will pay the difference. Correct. Or we'll keep the, that's right, the, the, the better spread. And that's our goal. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The yeah. second one. Yeah. If you guys keep the additional. Okay, okay, all right. I yield back. Okay, thank you so much, um, Commissioner Mitchell, uh, Commissioner Guider. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, what about uh, when some new technology comes out and it would be better than what we implemented now? How is that going to work? That, honestly, that, that does happen. Um, that we have, over the years, have gone back to past clients and, you know, uh, re audited if they've requested it and showed the additional savings. Um, you know, technology changed. Let's just go with the light bulb. It went from 32 to 28, from 28 to 15, 15 to 10, yeah. now it's down to eight. So, and it happened over the past 10 years. You know, so some of these clients uh, did, did projects where it was 28 watts, but that was the technology. It wasn't any better than that at that point. And, and so we've gone back to those clients because they've asked us to say, hey, is there something else we can do here to gain more savings? Because we're already seeing the savings annually, year over year. <coughs> is there another way we can save more money? So um, but that was, yeah. Well, more and more um, companies and, and buildings, especially homes and stuff like that, but also uh, big warehouses and things are going to solar. Yes, ma'am energy uh, was that ever discussed uh, 
for any of our buildings? It was. That was looked at in the initial phase and when they were figuring out how much we could spend and what kind of savings we had. At, at this point, um, solar is just getting to where it's almost in that 15-year payout. It was not cost efficient for us to do it now. But it's, it, it's coming. It will definitely more and more be solar farms are being... Yeah, it is. We will definitely revisit that in years to come. Um, and there's, there's more and more uh, different kind of opportunities that are coming up where people, you know, s companies supply it, kind of lease the power to you. They mm -hmm. put it on your property or you can buy from them. So there's a lot of different options that are out there. And those prices are coming down and down and down. But I they're just now. We talked about putting a solar farm out mm -hmm. at the old landfill. Mm -hmm. uh, and we have investigated <coughs> several of those opportunities in the last few years. I'll say five years ago, the cost was very much cost prohibitive. It was not worth considering for us. The last one we looked at still wasn't a good deal for the county, but it was getting really close to where the next one or the next one may be that breaking point that, that's what we need. Yeah, so. Okay, and where, where did you find the biggest savings? Uh, we, a waste on our part. <laughs> uh, the, well, I wouldn't say it's a waste of anything. Um, you know, uh, I go throughout the, the country and do this, and so I mean, you know, the one thing we always call it the lowest hanging fruit is lighting, just because you're going from each light is 32, each bulb is 32 watts or 28 watts, and now we're down to 10 watts, and now just the you know, <clears throat> bulb costs because the technology has gone down greatly. So that, like we said, it's a low-hanging fruit, so that's where you'll see the biggest bang for your buck. But all of the air conditioning systems are scheduled, they have, they're on a schedule where after hours they turn up or down. Yes, ma'am. I mean, you know, that, that, that's, that is an energy, I mean, that is <coughs> one of the major energy savers is to turn your air conditioner off, um, you know, or heaters or whatever, set it back and use outside air instead of 100% cooling or 100% uh, just mixing the airs a little bit more. Um, that, that'll help, uh, definitely. So I wouldn't say that that was a, a waste, that was just... No, I'll add, on, on the lighting, <coughs> each bulb is saving somewhere between <coughs> what is in 20 watts, which sounds fairly insignificant, <coughs> but when you do it over 10,000 bulbs that, you know, that, are, that are running, Year round, but this so wasn't just a change light bulb, correct? It, it was, was not. much was bigger yeah. equipment and the air. I would say the air conditioning, the heating, and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Maybe motion detector lights yeah. and things like that. Yes, ma'am. We did, we did, uh, you know, sensors in, the, in some of the locations, um, you know, changed out toilets and uh, new mechanical equipment that was more efficient. And energy management system, and new irrigation controllers. Um, so, all right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Let me go with um, yeah. Commissioner Carson. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mr. Worthington, the new portion of the um, secured areas that we just did in the courthouse was this incorporated under the Amazon's area? Yes. Um, although there's still a little bit of work that's going to have to be finished up in there. Yeah. Yeah, but, but it is part of it. I yeah. believe. I'm going to work with Mark Teal. Oh, I mean, not, I'm sorry, Mark Price. Wrong. I apologize. <laughs> <laughs> just saw the name plate. Right. I apologize. <laughs> but Mark Price on uh, getting access to some of the some of the locations, you know, with court dates and you know, inmates moving in and out. We have just a few lights left in this building to do. And then, um, yeah. So, yes. And my other question is. The, um, <coughs> the security part, the being able to access it. We have that ability, right? So if, so let's just say we need it to access this on a Sunday afternoon. Yes, ma'am. We would have the ability to So it. for this building, and it's not fully set up yet on the interface, mm -hmm. um, I believe we're still gonna have Mark Price handling this building as far as the controls like it's been being. Mm -hmm. And then the remainder of the outside buildings will go through property management. So be myself, Yo, yeah, Woody, um, we can probably set up to have Mark Till have control or something of some if we can't be reached or something. But we'll have control, we'll build. Okay. So there's a fallback. Right. Okay. Um, 
And there is there will actually be some manual override things if, if we have issues or whatever. So it will be it'll be good. Okay. And my other question is so um, if there is a drill, there's some type of, you know, emergency what what happens in in regards to like does your system shut everything down? Do we have power do we have the ability to override everything that they put in place? Um, well, so we could do that, uh, okay. but only on the energy management. We don't. We won't have a, a universal control for lighting. Mm -hmm. You know, like we're not. We won't have a one master switch to control all the lighting. Mm -hmm. um, trying to think of a scenario that we could do that with, but yeah. Okay. The master breaker. Just shut down. Yeah, kill the power that of the building. So you have uh -huh. that building killed 100%. Yeah, okay. And then when you start it back up, then the EMS system takes a couple minutes to get to reboot. Right. So, yeah, then it'll be. Yeah. All right. So. <laughs> that was it. Yeah. I yield back. Thank you. Thank you so much, Commissioner Carpenter. Commissioner Mitchell, you had one comment. Yes, in. yes. No, um, um, okay. Um, with the, the server that you spoke of, yes, I got that, but the server, and trying to secure it and make sure that we are secure. Mm -hmm. um, what kind of sort of that plan? I mean, you just never know what the hackers and kind of what their thought process is. We're going to try to get what the control and or deal with our power. Um, have we been working closely with, with uh, Russ on that? Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, what uh, that yeah. looks like and what that would entail? That, that'll have its own firewall built around it. So it's almost a standalone system from yours. Mm -hmm. So we're disconnecting it from your main system. So that these two can't, they're not tied together. Okay. Okay. We're using the, 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 the feeds, but we're not using, we're not tied to your server. Right. Okay. Yeah. So that's, that's how that's going to work. Okay. So have a yeah. firewall handle or whatever it may be where you got Russ it. has been involved and he, okay. will, he will be totally satisfied when we're done. Got it. Well, is, and, is there, and to piggyback off of Commissioner Byers, question about the change of technology, the change of, of bulbs you mentioned, mm -hmm. the change of how things and, and that whole savings come along. Who who will incur that cost if by chance the bulb went from a 28 to a 21? Right. right. You know, whatever the numbers are, that creates an even bigger savings for the county for you to come back and now change 3,000 bulbs again. Who, who incurs that cost to create a bigger savings? Is it the county and the change, or we change the bulb, or is it that you guys go back and recommend new bulbs and we change what you guys go back? Who, who does all that? I'm just want to understand how that works. To, to the comment, all above. <laughs> I mean, okay. you know, so I mean, we can do a whole other audit. You know, I mean, we're pretty far from being able to do that right now with the technology. For cost. So, yeah, for a cost, okay. exactly. Yeah, so right now, I mean, we're guaranteeing the system <laughs> off of what it is for X amount of time, and we're not anticipating coming back to upset. God. I don't mean it's, I don't know how else to say it. I mean, we may, we may look at solar, but to change but the light But you will let us know that there's a new bulb out yes, sir. that somehow was created that only used 10 whatever. Yes, sir. You know, yeah. and if you guys would like that to do another um, uh, reestablishment of savings, then we'll put these in at whatever the cost. Yeah, so we, we call ourselves a green energy partner also. Okay. So when my guys come through and do the measurement and verification, and they look at everything, which is part of the annual report, we'll also look at other items throughout the buildings mm -hmm. and say, hey, if you do this, that will help. You know, if you unplug these unit heaters underneath everybody's desk, that would help. And, you know, they have seven refrigerators in this room and only one's working. Uh, I mean, one has water in it. That would help. You know, we'll, we'll give options. I'm not saying that's the case right now. I'm just giving examples from other locations. Uh, so those are, and we would, we would provide that in our report. In, in your report, but when would it cost us to count? At what point? So it, it won't cost us anything in the future unless we choose to do something. Okay. So for example, like the last technology was fluorescent, contact fluorescent. Okay. Um, and then when the LED came along, we made the choice, let's move to this as an energy savings. 
if there's another technology that comes along that is better than LED, um, and we decide to do that, we'll have to renegotiate things at that point. There will always be, always be the option that we can do it in-house as long as we're improving our savings that won't impact this contract. Um, okay. I'm not aware of anything earth-shattering that's... We're to the point now, so like most of these bulbs are 10 watts. So the most we'll be able to save is 10 watts. Then you're down to using no energy at all. So okay. it's different from the old, you know, we were using 100 watt bulbs and then we used 60 and 10. And so there were some big gaps. Mm -hmm. We're getting so close down to the bottom now, things are really getting efficient. That <clears throat> okay. We're kind of losing the edge as far as what our options would be as like modes. But based on technology, tomorrow it could be that. Could be? That three watt. Sound right? <laughs> <laughs> that works. Okay, all right. I, I, I go. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you, uh, Commissioner Mitchell. Yeah, I'll, I'll make wrap up comments. So again, go back to initially, you're looking at the county, be, be strategic in your commentary. We had what, um, half million square feet worth of buildings, over 33 buildings. The jail is what, um, half million square feet? Correct. Uh, we did not look at the jail, is that correct? correct? Right. Um, the jail is how old? It came online in 13, this is 19, what, six years? Six years old? Yeah, about six years old. At, at what point do we, and I've got to meet tomorrow with the sheriff to talk about um, jail and other um, <coughs> monetary topics. At, at what point do we, is the jail ready to have a conversation? Was it already LED? You know, I just don't remember. So when we started this process, this has been in the, in the works for a few years now. So the jail would have only been three years old. Okay. Then. Right. Uh, it's LEED certified, which is, when it was built, that was kind of your highest standards for energy efficiency already. Yep. Doesn't mean there's not some room for improvement, some way to change something to improve, but it, it means those margins are going to be slim compared to the rest of the county where some of the buildings are 50 years old and, you know, there's right. a lot of opportunity. Uh, what we had discussed previously with the administration of the company was um, we can revisit this as a separate program really whenever we want if we want to look into it um, and I think kind of the last deal internal discussions were we'll get through this see how everything goes and then we can move right into looking at that as a separate program if we yeah. want to proceed with it. I won't belabor it. I know this was good. And we did, I want to keep Madam Chair's agenda on point. I just wanted to highlight that. Again, the 33 buildings that we looked at for context was a half million square feet. The top buildings in this county, half million square feet total, 33 buildings. The jail is a half million square feet by itself. Mm -hmm. And the magnitude of that is just like, well, is there any savings? <clears throat> if we got this type of savings with 33 buildings and you got the equivalent in the jail, I just want to know at what point can we perhaps get some savings out of that big building? But your sounds like, not quite yet, not quite yet. And it's okay, you don't have to force that, uh, but I'm always gonna keep up with that. Um, um, you just put that to the side. <coughs> the last thing is, is that just you guys' comments on solar, we did talk about that. We have talked about the landfill. It did come up in our conversations with Amoresco early on, but we said keep the scope tight. Do this first, do the audit, deliver this, and then you have a conversation. So I don't wanna discount, you guys are accurate. It was talked about but that was not part of this scope, just so it didn't get away from us, Madam Chair. And so this was strictly go in there, do what you're supposed to do, deliver us the savings, and then perhaps if you do good, we could have that conversation. So I don't, I didn't, you know, there, there may be opportunity for solar, but that wasn't the scope of this project. Are you? Okay, thank you so much. I really appreciate the flexibility of this system. Uh, thank you so much, uh, James Worthington, for uh, being able to have some access to the thermostat for our seniors, particularly for their dance. <laughs> We got a call that there was a heat box in the dance, and we were just, uh, and I would appreciate you being able sure. to cool them off. And I also just had one last question. We have a couple of buildings coming online very soon, which is our multi-purpose center and the senior center and our firehouse. Are there any plans in the future to incorporate those buildings as well? So they were not included under the current contract. Right. Mm -hmm. um, we will be looking, at least as a consideration, to see about tying those in under the control system. Mm -hmm. um, it's still too early to say whether that'll work or what the cost will be or if it'll benefit us. But 
it will be considered. Okay. But thank you so much uh, for the presentation, and thank you, James. Thank you. Thank you all. Appreciate all it. right. We'll move on to the next item. I'm just going to switch things up just a little bit. I want to introduce our new senior services director, but before I introduce her, I wanted to certainly extend and commend uh, um, Mr. Richard Hagan for his many years of services here in Douglas County for Senior Services, and we'll just, if we could, just give him an applause because he's been here Now I would like to bring forth his replacement, and her name is Dr. Kinsella Gilchrist. Uh, could you please come forward and introduce yourself uh, and just say a few words to the Board of Commissioners and also to uh, the rectors and also to our citizens here in Douglas County. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Madam Chair, thank you for the opportunity. Um, I am excited to be here and to be part a part of the Douglas County family. I thank you all so much for your kindness and generosity and for accepting me um, after so many years with Richard. I know I have some big shoes to fill, but I am up for the challenge and ready to go. But please answer your phones when I call you and <laughs> need some um, help and some assistance. And we're looking forward to um, seeing what we can do to further help the seniors of Douglas County. That's a, a passion and a love of, of mine, and I am just super, super excited. So again, thank you so much. Thank you. All right, we'll move on to our first business. I thank you so much, um, Dr. Gilchrist. Uh, we'll move on to uh, tab number four. Uh, business item. Oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Approval of the minutes. Uh, Board of Commissioners, please uh, read the minutes for tomorrow and be prepared to uh, approve uh, accordingly. Uh, next, we'll move to the first business item, tab number four, resolution to approve Project Southern Charms participation in the Douglas County Tax Savings <coughs> Incentive Plan and authorize the chairman to sign all related <coughs> documents. We have our executive uh, director <coughs> of the development uh, authority, Mr. Chris Pumphrey. Good uh, morning, everyone. How are you all this morning? Doing great. Good. Glad to be here before you this morning. Uh, as <coughs> the agenda states, uh, we are here um, from the Development Authority who unanimously passed at a special call meeting uh, last week, Monday, for Project Southern Charm to be on the uh, Douglas County Tax Incentives Plan. You all should have received uh, the resolution um, last week and also received the project profile that kind of outlines um, everything uh, about the project, and as much as we, as much as we um, have on hand uh, about the company as well, um, the basics you know of the project is this is an e-commerce uh, operation where uh, Prologis, which is the largest industrial developer in the world, who has developed a number of buildings here in Douglas County, is currently developing a 925. 925,800 square foot um, industrial building on Factory Shoals Road. Um, and that building is not quite complete, which is a good thing for them that they've been able to uh, secure uh, a tenant for the entire space. Um, and that tenant is Project Southern Charm. So uh, this, this uh, the building, as I mentioned, will be uh, completed later on this year. Um, we have been working with Project Southern Charm and the team of Prologis in the Georgia Department of Economic Development over the last several months. Um, also, I've been working with uh, county staff, uh, fire marshal, development services, um, as well over the last uh, several weeks about the project. Uh, the company would create 981 jobs uh, over a five-year span, so nearly 1,000 new jobs uh, into the area. Um, the average wage of 1582, I'm about to here. Um, is the uh, yeah 1582 is the average wage, um, and the the tax incentive plan would be on the real property, and that would be the building that Prologis is developing today. Um, any personal property or inventory um, in the building would all be taxable assets uh, for the project. We also have uh, Mr. David Cisco who is here uh, with the company as well. Who could further expound on anything that he would like to, that he can share about the company and be able to answer any questions about the business operation from you all as well? 
Please come forward. If what is your name again? David Sisto. Okay, thank you. Please state your name and just tell us a little bit about this wonderful project. Yeah, um, so we are, like Chris said, an online retail company. Um, we have been growing double digit revenue growth um, ever since we started. And this, our third quarter had just ended. We grew revenue uh, nearly 30%, and we grew our active client base 17%. So, still seeing a lot of growth and upward trajectory on our end. That being said, we haven't actually opened a new warehouse facility anywhere in the U.S. since 2016. So um, I'm, an, I'm a network strategy manager for the company. So we were really looking at starting to grow our footprint in the U.S. and get ready for our growth down the road. And when we had evaluated that, we, we worked with our data science partners to look at key areas geographically where we, we didn't have a strong presence in terms of our distribution today. And so working with them, we um, locked in on the southeast and then did a lot more uh, exploration into what city should it be, what labor market, and um, worked with the folks in Douglas County to get a better understanding of the talent that you guys have out here. Okay. Thank you for choosing Douglas County and we're humbled. That's a lot of jobs. I appreciate you. Yeah, Thank we're you. excited to be here. Any questions from the board? Vice Chair Chairman Robinson has a thank question you. for you. Yeah, thank you. And, and Chris be on standby as well. So, uh, factory, sh you said Black Shoals Factory Shoals. What did you say, Chris? Factory Shoals. Factory Shoals. <laughs> District 2. All right. Um, 981 jobs. Um, I heard your average wage. How many of those would be management, right? I'm always curious as to you know, how much opportunity is there for, as you say, the local talent to perhaps participate in the upside of you know, a good career. Are you able to share that? Just a, a general, what percentage? You don't have to reveal anything secret. Or anything. Yeah, rough percentage. I can follow up. Oh, you have the numbers. Yeah, I'm yeah, not putting you on spot. We, we have that information. It, it helps. Call one fifty. Yeah, about one one fifty of the thousand. Okay. Yeah. Managerial, non. Yeah, it would be um, like GM for the building, but also yep. uh, manager and supervisor roles, yes. which are salary positions. All right, so you got structure in there. So yes, it's not necessarily flat. You have hierarchy in which people can grow. That that that's always important. Yes. Uh, thank you for that, Chris. So this fits our investment policy. Do we need to make any changes to it, or does it hit dead on? No, sir. We. Um Based on the, the 2013 tax incentive um, plan ordinance that was passed, yes, um, this fits right within that plan. We made no no changes to it. Very good. Okay. The second question is this: is, is, I, I heard you say you're working with state economic development. Is the state involved as far as the plan? You don't have. If you don't know, that's okay. I'm just I'm comfortable where we are. I'm just asking. Sure, sure. So um, I would say all all the parties to the project we've worked with. The Georgia Department of Economic Development and their statewide team, um, Georgia Power and their statewide team, Economic Development team, um, the Metro Atlanta Chamber uh, as well has been a part of the project and we work with the real estate uh, community, JLL, representing um, uh, Project Southern Charm and then I think JLL is on both sides, also representing the, uh, the building as well. Okay. You. okay. You, you. Yes, ma'am. Commissioner Guyton. Yes, uh, Chris, you were talking to me before the meeting, and you were talking about our governor Kemp, and then we're giving uh, some kind of credit, tax credit to the company. Could yeah, you go so, into it? So we've got um, the the state has its its uh, statutory incentives that they offer, and so um, the, all of Georgia is broken down into a tier system. Douglas County is a tier three community, so from a job tax credit standpoint. For at a minimum 15 jobs that are created, a company is eligible for a $1,750 state corporate income tax. Um, that tax credit goes towards 50% of the company's um, income tax liability. And so Project Southern Charm will receive uh, the credits for that, which are roughly $8.5 million of state job tax credits um, over a five-year period. I'm starting my memory starting to fade on the state programs um, <laughs> and then uh, the state uh, sales and use tax exemption which was, which is roughly 140,000 there also um, is the state is committing a discretionary grant uh, to the project as well and that is 
basically you have your statutory incentives and those are the things that you can read in the brochure. Mm -hmm. And then kind of when it comes down to a competitive situation between um, a finalist site in Georgia and a finalist site in another state, then um, the, the state can layer on what they call a discretionary grant. And so they did um, offer a discretionary grant for the project as well. And that, that grant could be used for its retrofit, acquisition of equipment, or various things. Uh, thank you for that. And Mr. Cisco, uh, is this your first distribution center here in the States? In the U.S.? Uh-huh. No, this will be our <coughs> six. Six. Yeah. And how long have y'all been doing this? Uh, the the how company old is was, the company, I guess? Yeah, the company was founded in 2011. All right. And then, like I said, so we have a... Um, By got five. a woman, I think. <laughs> we have five distribution centers today, but we haven't opened up any more in three years. All right. So we've had those five um, to basically set us up for the first five, first five years of the company and then set us up long term to continue to grow. And we realized that uh, yeah, this is a good problem to have, but we've been outpacing our own growth expectations. And so we're just trying to set ourselves up for the next few years. And Grit, uh, Chris, you told me, you explained to me that the reason they're exempt for the first five years is because of the point system that we have Correct. in place mm -hmm. with all of our tax abatements. Correct. Correct. And for so many employees and so many mm -hmm. square feet and so much uh, investment and stuff like that, yeah. it uh, boils down to where they can qualify for the first mm -hmm. five years as um, tax exempt on the building, mm -hmm. not the personal property. Correct. Or the equipment, I mean, yeah, and so uh, they would, um, uh, and then after that they would be taxable on a, a pro rata share. So okay, I, I, I yield back. Thank you. Okay. Welcome to Douglas County. Thank you. Okay. okay, I believe Attorney Bernard has a comment or question. Mm -hmm. I did. No, go ahead. Let's see. That's coming out. I'm getting signals, and I'm thinking I'm reading between the lines. David Corbin did a presentation to y'all, and I just want y'all. This is the the draft of this is the same as the old draft mm -hmm. abatements. It has no incorporated changes from Mr. Corbin. Okay. And he's not reviewed it, but I just wanted y'all to know it's the same as we used to do. Okay. Thank you, uh, Commissioner Mitchell. Yes, just just a couple. So, um, this these nine hundred mm -hmm. jobs. When are we going to put the word out that? These 900 jobs are available, so the general public. And what's that skill set? Do they need to be some high tech engineer, or can they just be able to breathe and follow up a mirror? Hopefully, somewhere in the middle. Um, okay. So, the, the nature of the work at the associate level mm -hmm. is, is mainly pick, pack, and ship. We okay. don't have a ton of racking in our warehouses, we don't operate forklifts. And so, um, to get your foot in the door, it truly really is like an entry level role where you don't need a lot of background experience. Mm -hmm. In terms of job postings, we, we've already begun posting internally mm -hmm. um, on our website and then I think we're actually working with Breezy and the team here to continue with next steps of recruiting efforts at campuses and career fairs and things mm -hmm. like that. Yeah, so, so Chris, did we, I know you and I had a conversation earlier about uh, did we ever send the link page or whatever it is that, that stated that there's a job fair or yeah, not not yet. Oh, um, we don't we don't have a fair just yet. And I think as of even as of Wednesday or Friday, we were still going back and forth on the details okay. of, of what's on what. So it's not quite ready yet. Oh, okay, but that's forthcoming. Yeah, yeah. but I, but I don't. We haven't set up a job fair. Okay. But more or less, just kind of how the positions would be posted, where they would be posted, and just making sure. Well, that's where I'm looking. Yeah, yeah. yeah, fair would be great. Though, yeah, 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 but at least so we we could share that information out with anybody else that these jobs are available mm -hmm. more so than anything. Um, and, and I'm assuming he's fully aware that, you know, hiring Douglas Williams, there's a potential credit that uh, could be also offset things, correct? Or, or Yeah, so what you're referring to is basically 30% of the employment base are Douglas County residents. An additional year can be added onto the plan at the final year's rate, um, and I think it's 40% in additional two years mm -hmm. um, on at the final year's rate. Mm -hmm. So, but, but I'm just I'm mm -hmm. assuming. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah, and, and, that, and that's all in our agreements. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay, okay. And, and I guess last but not least, um, Ken. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'll, I'll 
Alex having a senior moment. So you've had a chance to kind of focus all over it. And, and I guess what you said earlier that uh, the program is the program that we had back in 2013, 14, I think it was. So. Well, the, word, the words on this abatement uh, uh, agreement are identical, uh, almost identical. They're not exactly identical, but of the old form abatement that you all used to do, it does not include the acceleration, which is part of the program, Chris. And the accelerators are part of our resolution, I guess. But, yeah, any kind of acceleration of, of down your ranges, but these, this is what we used to do all the time. Okay. The callback is only the current year if there is a discrepancy on April. There's a process for audit each April, mm -hmm. and it's the same deal, and then you can get back on track. If it's transferred, as long as the transferee receives, uh, commits to the same program, they can pick it up where it is. If it ever gets off, there's a remedy period provision, but it's, it, it's the old draft. Yeah. That makes sense. And, and I think this Carlton will be somewhere in this whole midst of monitoring kind of who's watching uh, the house or, and I'm, that's not a question for you, okay? and I'm just mm -hmm. kind of who's going to monitor this to make sure that everybody's on the same page, everybody's moving in the right direction. If there's a now time frame, here's what it is and, and here's the outcome. Because I, I think as a committee design, am I correct? It is. That, okay, <coughs> that <coughs> that, <coughs> that, okay, I, I, okay, I know somebody. Okay, so, so we, we do have that in place so we can at least, you know, assure that everybody's doing all the right things. Mm -hmm. That's correct. Oh, okay, okay, so yeah, that is in place, okay. Mm -hmm. um, and last but not least, what's the target start date tomorrow or is it? For associates? associates for, for everything that, to, to get you guys going in the direction of hiring um, uh, the, the whole makeup I don't know that whole plan when, when you guys kind of hopefully be up and uh, hopefully you can tell me within that first year you're going to hire the, the 900 people but I, I'm, getting, I'm reaching extremely uh, far on that but. so our uh, our target date to have the building fully operational is Monday October 7th mm -hmm. okay. so with that we are probably going to have our first wave of employees starting about four to six weeks prior to that so end of August okay. Um, okay. but that really depends on working with Prologis and the team on when you can actually access the building because mm -hmm. like Chris had mentioned it's it's uh, the shell is complete there's still some retrofitting that we're doing for, yeah. for our specs mm -hmm. that, that's yeah. and then by by the end of this year we're looking to have for, for that launch in October, we're looking to have 60 to 80 associates on day one. Yeah. And then by the end of the year, we think it'll be about 150, okay. um, just by the end of the calendar year, so within the first 90 days. So very aggressive. Yeah. Okay, okay, all right, okay. And, and I was gonna ask kind of what is it that you guys be doing, but I, I'll, I'll leave that up to the experts. <laughs> I, I yield that. Oh, okay, <laughs> yeah. all right, thank you so much, Commissioner Mitchell. Yeah. Commissioner Carthen. Yeah. Chris, can you talk about the agreement, um, just kind of piggybacking off of what Commissioner Mitchell said about the agreements so that everybody's reporting. So this time we have um, three contracts, is that right? One with the yeah, so it's a three-party agreement three -party. Um, where you've got Prologis being the building owner, uh, Project Southern Charm being basically the end user, the creator of the jobs, and, um, and the county. Okay. And basically that, that three-party agreement basically states that the, the, the county is allowing for Project Southern Charm and Prologis, I guess, well, Prologis to go on the property tax incentive plan per the job creation of Project Southern Charm. Um, and on an annual basis, there will have to be a reporting to the fact that the investment has been made, which will be made in the first year because it's on the building, mm -hmm. um, that the investment will be made, but that'll be an annual reporting requirement and that the jobs that are outlined um, are, have been committed to. Um, there is an 80% an threshold on the jobs, and so, you know, it basically says that, you know, we use easy math, it's a thousand jobs, <laughs> you know, it gives you a 20% kind of cushion um, on, that, um, on that job creation uh, versus just a hard stop. So like if they end up at 979 instead of 981, you know, you know, so it, it leaves a cushion there, and we, and we have that in place. Um, our first plan was a 100% requirement, which is pretty onerous. I mean, if, like I said, if someone commits to create 981 and they only create 980, well, that's not 100%. Um, 
um, but that doesn't necessarily mean that it was done in bad faith. Um, and so, um, what so what is a part of the ordinance allows for the 80% threshold when there's a state discretionary grant that's been um, involved, which we do have on this project. Um, the city of Douglasville actually does 80% regardless, um, regardless of whether it's a state grant or not um, on their plans. And it will probably be a good idea for us to do the same thing. Um, but, but the agreement is between those three through, through our office on the front end, we're making the communications about, um, you know, just giving a heads up that your reporting is going to be due April 1st, um, and then we do, and then we do that in fall, then we do another reminder with specifics about their particular program um, in January, that's basically saying on April 1st, you have to report on this, this is what you said you were going to do, we're expecting to see that on April 1st. And then, and then that's kind of where the process begins of making sure that the the projects are on track. Mm -hmm. And Mr. Cisco, what's the high end? You, you gave us the average, but on the high end, what is the salary? Um, the high end, I'd have to pull that up exactly. I, I don't want to mislead you, but we have like our GM as an example would probably be the highest, but that would just be for one position. Um, yeah, we're, we're working with our comp team on our side to get exact numbers, and we'll know that in the coming weeks, but don't have that. Yeah, I, I, yeah, probably 150 to 160 range, I would think, but I don't have the final number yet. Okay. Uh, and just to give you guys a sense of our confidence interval on our end, too, we have one of our distribution facilities in Pennsylvania is 500,000 square feet, and that building has over 700 employees right now. So. This being 925,000, we feel really confident about being able to hit that 981. Mm -hmm. That's good. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. All board commissioners, thank you all so much, Mr. Cisco. Thank you so much, and thank you so much, uh, Executive Director Chris Popper. We appreciate the presentation. Thank you. Thank all you. Right. Thank you for answering all the questions for us. All right, we're going to move on to tab number five. Tab number five is resolution authorizing the coroner's office to operate under all previously established laws, rules, regulations, and procedures adopted by any Douglas County Board of Commissioners pursuant to any um, applicable laws. Um, our coroner, Renee Gottlin, is here to present. If you could, coroner, if you could go to the podium. And, uh, I believe you have a resolution here that you want us to take a look at regarding your certification, correct? Correct. Good morning. Uh, good morning. Go for it. The um, <coughs> resolution is in reference to uh, the court, I'm sorry, the Board of Commissioners uh, giving us their blessing to receive our national accreditation and to recognize us through Georgia Peace office and standard. Uh, the accreditation is nationally accredited and it holds us at, as, at a higher standard as it relates to policy procedures and record keeping. And it also allows us to get grants for the department. Okay. Um, Mr. Cisco, are you finished? Okay. Any okay. questions from the board or comments? Um, Commissioner Carthen. So when you say it's a national standard, Georgia Peace Officer Standards and Training Council and allows you to get grants for the coroner's office. Yes. Grants such as equipment, vehicles, anything that we need in the office. Um, we can get vans, new vans, fully equipped and body bags, all of that. Okay, and so that would help you to offset some of your budget increases yes. that you, okay, by allowing you to get this training, which you guys have already completed. Yes. Okay, that's good to know. Thank you for being proactive. How you been? Okay. Corinne, also I realize that accreditation process is very rigorous, particularly being in the hospital setting, joint commission, and all those accreditation processes. So I know you have quite a few boxes to check to get to this point. A little bit, if you could just elaborate, uh, I believe you will, will we be the only um, coroner's office in the state, or talk about your, how, what this would position us to be? Yes, we will county. be the only coroner's office in the state of Georgia to receive national accreditation, 
and it just holds us as a higher it holds holds us at, at a higher level than the corner office sets us above the rest. Okay. Thank you so much. I'm Commissioner Geiger. Uh, why is it that this kind of board of commissioners have to do this? Because uh, you're an elected official. You you stated that you're not under us, that you're your own boss. So um, why do we have to get involved in it? It's just the blessings from the uh, board of commissioners saying that they agree with us as far as us get, trying to obtain our national accreditation. Is this stating that you're doing your job as the rules and the laws require you? Yes. To? But you're under a court order right now from a judge from this county saying you're not doing your job in, in one aspect of it. And then uh, there's an opinion in 1997 that you're not, you cannot be a peace officer. So I don't understand where the word peace officer is coming from. That's, that's Georgia Post. That only allows us to be identified under public safety in the entity of Douglas County. We are listed under pu public safety, if you would look at the back of your calendar, but it recognizes us as being in that entity. It's well, not I, saying that we I are peace like officers. I would like legal to look at this because there's a, I have the Attorney General's opinion. It's an unofficial opinion, but it, it is an official. Uh, it is from the um, uh, Attorney General's office, but it's, uh, because it's stating that you cannot be a deputy or commissioned under uh, a peace officer uh, if you serve as coroner. So I would like that to be looked at but um and I, I have a concern in the fact that you're under a court order from a judge superior court judge right now stating you're you have you're not doing your job properly and i don't understand why we have to get involved in this <laughs> you are entitled to your opinion yes this, this resolution i don't i'll jump in it, it's it's I, I consider it harmless if it helps the corner operator or office. It's not, we can't convey <coughs> policing powers to anybody. And so it doesn't do that. I will say that part of the coroner's investigative training is actually administered by POST. POST actually trains coroners, have, has training facilities in the state of Georgia for coroners. But what I read this is just simply saying, the coroner is saying, I'm applying for grants and recognition, national certification, and I'm agreeing that whatever rules that have been established, we're, we're going to follow them. It, it doesn't convey any new right or privilege or anything else as I read it. So I don't think, I think it's uh, harmless. I will say though that, believe it or not, the post training, they're the, they're the folks involved in state training of corners, believe it or not. So, but this doesn't convey policing powers this resolution at all. Well, the paragraph I had trouble with was, uh, whereas the Board of Commissioners and the coroner desire to establish clearly that the current coroner is authorized to offer, I mean, operate under all laws, rules, regulations, and procedures previously established by any Board of Commissioners. What does that mean? I see. It is a very broad statement to get certification. It doesn't mean anything. You don't know the truth. It's a resolution. Because can, candidly, the coroner's office, you know, this is uh, an interesting dialogue. She's elected. State law really impacts her job more than anything y'all do. But I think there are internal pro uh, processes like personnel, like uh, management, those kind of things that she's saying, I agree to comply with y'all's requirements. So I don't see I, I don't I don't see it as anything. I think we're probably overthinking this. I read this as just a, a get out of a get certification resolution. I don't see it as anything else. Because there is no home I will I, I, let me go back so we'll walk through this. State law state law establishes the coroner's office in the elected capacity. State law establishes, for the most part, 
the rules and regulations of what coroners do or don't do. There is local legislation that affects pay that we've gone through before that was adopted by the legislature. But even under home rule, you wouldn't overcome, for the most part, any rule that would affect state law uh, in her performance of her job. Other than I think she's agreeing as a matter of comedy to work with y'all on anything that y'all have established she's going to comply with. That's how I read that. Well, there is a state law that says that the coroner shall do the work. Uh, the deputy cannot do the work when the coroner's there that she's or they are responsible. And we're getting billed by a deputy when the coroner's there, so I have a problem with that one. That's not what's on the agenda. That's a state law, though. Yeah, that's a state law. That's not what's on this resolution. That, it that says discussion. All rules and laws and regulations and procedures. So um, I don't feel that the procedure is being followed by state law. So I go back. Thank you. All right. I'll just keep the personal. We, we won't just be the personal. personal. You ready? Yep, good. Okay, uh, th thank you, now I'm Gordon, for being here. I, I personally appreciate uh, what you do. Um, uh, you haven't heard me say this personally, but you know, like all of our first responders, people who have to go out there while we sleep at night, I don't care who goes out, one o'clock, two o'clock in the morning, have to deal with the, the backside of, of humanity and, and, and clean up stuff and establish stuff for the record. Um, and I'm not going to um, take it lightly of what you have to carry um, by way of um, just you and all first responders and the stuff that we, we get convenient. Like I, I said this before, like, you know, we watch Dateline, we think we got it. But, you no, know, I thank you for what you do. Uh, I appreciate your courage and all that you do. Now, let me get on to the business at hand. I'm, I'm careful with my commentary because uh, to Ken's point, this is harmless. This is what the Board of Commissioners desires to do to get behind the corner like any other office. This is not a big deal. I personally, um, as it relates to corridors and all of that, I mean, I, I disagree, right? I, I have just as much power as a probate judge to make a, a, an opinion. Uh, other people have come in here established about work. This is not an HR matter about, I, I think this is the wrong form for that commentary. This is about a resolution. This is just like us going to ACCG and leveraging their purchasing power. It's like us going to NACO this week at a national level as commissioners to get certified, to do better, <clears throat> to acknowledge that, okay, I'm trying to come in compliance. I'm, I'm becoming more efficient. Now, now, if I took a position against everybody who may make a mistake <coughs> or miss something, take out half the room, right? Meaning, it, it, it's an overcriticalness like, okay, really? Really? And I, and I, I, I said, really? And I, I want to balance this, it, 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 to your point, Madam Chair, and I want to, <coughs> there's a line, and I, I don't want to believe at this moment of, of the ask is appropriate, um, a resolution of, of support, that look, I'm trying to go to a higher level. We're trying to make this better. This office really had no real standard. I'm working my way through it just like the commission. We, we're raising the standard here. Don't make us talk about the policies and stuff that we've missed. Um, I mean, you really don't want to have that. And I'm, it, this is not personal, I'm just, it's, I'm saying you. And Ken mentioned earlier we, and I said to myself, well, it's not really we. We, we don't have an issue, meaning me, uh, with this resolution. But I, I get the general commentary. Um, let, let's, let's just focus on what's being asked. Uh, I, I think it, to, to the attorney's point, well, you can do it or not do it, but I, I support this. If somebody wants to take a position against it, that's fine. You, you know, you press no. Uh, but it's nothing that, that will belabor it going to the agenda tomorrow to, 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 to go forward. Um, I appreciate you uh, bringing this forward and acknowledging in front of the public that you look, we're trying to make the operation better. We're getting certified. We're sensitive to those things. Um, something that has never been done before. Um, I appreciate trying to raise the standard. And I'm going to yield to them. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. 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 Thank you.
No nothing, no office equipment, no vehicles. So we had to start from scratch. Mm -hmm. And now we have our policy and procedure mm -hmm. in order. We have vehicles now. We have uniforms. We have staff. Mm -hmm. We have office equipment. And we have all of our needed supplies. And procedures? Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. And in order to start your process for the accreditation, you have to have policies and procedures. Mm -hmm. So we had to start there first. Mm -hmm. And now that we have them, we, will, we are ready to start our assessment phase, which will start on July 29th. Mm -hmm. And um, once we get that done, the assessors will come out, look at our policy and procedure, our record keeping, mm -hmm and they would make the decision to award us the accreditation. And then once we get the award, it will be presented by the governor. Yeah, yeah. And, and I think I heard you and I share a couple of things. This is, you'll be the first gift to me if this happened. If it in does. the state of Georgia. In the state of Georgia. Yes. Well, that's, that's got to be huge uh, to, to be now the only one setting the standard and setting the pace. Um, and, and how many hours is this? Is this hours that you and your team put together? This is hours that you went through, uh, like you through ACCG and get all these hours. Is it, is it all about you and your hours or is it about the team? Team. Okay. It was a team. It's a team effort and okay. it takes a lot, a lot of hours of research mm -hmm. for this process. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so you're asking here for us is our blessing and or support. Yes. Not that you, I don't want to get into whether or not you need this or not, but you're asking for our blessing and support of where you're going and where you're taking uh, your team as the corners uh, and deputy corners and others uh, and what direction you're going with this particular department. Correct? Yes. Okay. okay. Um, so with that, I mean, I, I, I don't, I don't see it as a, as a concern or issue. I'm, I'm glad and proud of you and where you've kind of taken this position and taken the lead and moving <coughs> in the direction with this whole makeup. Uh, I think it's important that you and, and we had this conversation about providing for the citizens of Douglas County the utmost and the, the best in standards. And if this is what it's going to take to kind of assure that you are making sure and that we are doing for our citizens of Douglas County giving them the best, then why wouldn't we support this? And I'm not asking for a question. It's not a question. Why wouldn't we support something like this? So I, I commend you and give you kudos on, on doing this and continuing to, to grow uh, this coroner's office. And, you know, I just, it's a good thing. So continue that. And I, 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 I'm like vice chair, I, I, I'm not gonna get into you know, pointing fingers at anything. I want to know kind of where we're going and how we're going to make it better. And if this is something that would allude to that, I think why not? So, thank you again. Thank you. Good job with that. I go back. Okay. Thank you so much, and Courtney. Thank you so much for coming in today. And again, this will be on the agenda tomorrow. And I made it very clear when I took office, there is no room for second place. And I appreciate you doing this. This is important to me, and also for every citizen in this county to be recognized and accredited uh, for what you do I, and, and for your office and things because, you know, I said again, from sunrise to sunset, we will take care of our citizens, so thank you. Okay? Have a good day. I would All like right. to say uh, okay. one thing. Uh, Commissioner Guider, <coughs> I invite you to my office to spend a day with me to see what I do, and uh, my doors is always open to you. 
And I would like to say I've seen reports from your office where you said you did 12 investigations when we were billed for still. eight by your deputies. I invite you to my office. I will come. Stay. Okay. I, will, I want you to stay a whole day with me so you can see my daily operation, not something you were told. Okay, thank you. And what we'll do, um, Commissioner, uh, should I say, Coroner Godwin, who came by your office the other day, and again, still, still, like I've seen it before, and I do personally invite all the commissioners to take a peek like me. I come out of the ivory tower, I walk the walk and talk the talk, and I was there to look at records and things of that sort, because I'm, I'm always checking. Uh, I don't just trust, I, I verify as well. So thank you so much, and we look forward to this being on the agenda tomorrow. We're going to move on to tab thank number you. six. Authorization to amend the animal services budget for donations received to be used for spay and neuter from the fourth annual spay and neuter fundraiser in the amount of $18,335. Our Director McMillan. Well, I'm excited to say that our fourth annual spay and neuter fundraiser, uh, which was started by Mike Mulcair and is co uh, hosted by the Humane Society and the Animal Services, was a great success this year. And the Humane Society has presented us with a check for $18,335 to be used towards spay and neuter uh, in our in-house surgical suite at the Animal Services Building, and I hope you will consider to amend the budget so we can go forward with those spays and neuters. Um, this should help us uh, greatly um, help our reach our goal of spay and neuter all adopted animals from the animal shelter. <coughs> okay, any questions from the board? Okay, we'll move on to the next one, tab number seven, authorization to implement the Animal Service Court Diversion Program in an effort to educate citizens about responsible pet ownership. Director McMillan. One of our biggest goals this year is to step up our education of the public um, mm -hmm. by uh, educating them about spay and neuter and the laws, ordinances of Douglas County for confining their pets, um, general pet care welfare concerns. Um, we do occasionally have to take people to court, um, and we feel instead of having them go to court and missing a day of work um, and not getting the education that we need, we could offer them a court diversion program. We would charge them a $55 fee. They could take a class, which would be on a Saturday, which would allow this citizen not to have to miss work to go to court and miss out on a day, because miss out on a day's pay minimum fine per charge is $100 plus court costs and surcharges um, and this education would be on a Saturday. The fees would go back in towards our educational fund to help educate the community and um, hopefully this would solve the problem of whatever we took them to court for, um, you know, leash laws and if their animals are loose, not getting vaccinated, not being spayed and neutered when they do adopt from the shelter which some, if they're too young, we have to go under contract. Uh, so there are contracts on some of the animals to get spayed and neutered. But we feel like this class would help with education with the public is what we stepped up to do uh, <coughs> this year. Okay, any questions from the board? All right, we'll move on to the next item, tab number eight, authorization to approve an agreement between the clerk of Superior Court and rapid financial solutions to pay jury <coughs> with a debit card instead of a check. Thank you so much, uh, Director McMillan. Thank you. You're welcome. Good how are you? I'm fine. How are you? Tammy Howard. Um, thank you all so much for this opportunity to come before you to present an agreement, uh, which I gave the agreement to Miss Lisa, between my office and Rapid Financial Solutions. We want to start paying our jurors with a debit card instead of a check. Um, the reason is I'm having a lot of fraud on my jury account. I had three checks last week, just last week after I presented to the Finance Committee where they signed my name. Um, the check looks just like ours, it just has an extra number on it. But on the three checks last week, the signature wasn't anything like my signature. Mm -hmm. The two checks last year were big checks and they looked identical to my signature. Luckily, we caught them in time because we have positive pay on our accounts. <coughs> so we caught them in time, but if we hadn't, we would have been out of my money. And this happens all the time on, on just the jury account. I have uh, 10 or 11 accounts, and it just happens on my jury account. Uh, another thing that's happened over the last few years is now you can take a, a picture of the check and, and mm -hmm. get money that way. 
well, jurors do that, then they just throw the check in a drawer, and six months later they find the check, and they go, oh, and they cash it again. So um, I've been lucky to write kind of little ugly letters to them, uh, people, and they come and pay the money back to the county. So um, I, those two, I were able to, we were able to find those two people. But um, it's just, it's happening a lot on these accounts. So there's several counties that's using this company. It's um, it's court funds or rapid uh, financials the name of the company but what happens is in the Fayette County and Pawnee County love it there's several other counties and I went and watched them do it and and so I did all my research um, when the jury comes in you have a jury summons that has a barcode on it we scan that barcode in we will then scan this will be a, a they'll have a barcode in here we will scan the card and give it to that juror so it's tied to that juror and nobody else there's no money on it until we put the money on it through our computer system. So um, it's very safe. I ran it by legal. Jennifer, she looked at the contract. We changed it the, um, to fit us, and they, they changed everything. I went before the finance committee, so they're aware of it, and they seem to like everything on it. Um, so I'm just wanting to change to that. And the number one is what's the cost? The cost of this little card is 49 cents, which is what cost me to mail a check. So we will wash out on the, on the cost. Um, and we're very excited to start it just because of the fraud. It's going to help us cut down on the fraud. Um, help it. A lot of people cost, they've lost their check. So it will help us with that. And also, um, they'll have instant access to their funds. As soon as we load the money, they can go use their card. Um, we don't have, once we give them the card, I don't have to deal with them anymore. If they lose it, if it's not right, if it's not working, anything like that, they have to contact them. They're available. Uh, their customer service will take care of all of that. So, and if, if we don't like it, I can stop it after 30 days. That's in the contract. But I feel like it will be a benefit to us. We will have instant bank reconciliation because we put $15,000 in and we they take $15,000 out. Um, Unclear checks is a big problem for me um, in the jury account. I have thousands of dollars and we have to wait. We have to wait five years. And so we're constantly trying to clear off that account. So this will cut all of that out. So we're really excited and we hope that you agree and that we get the agreement signed. Do you have any questions? Any questions? Okay. My, my, my first question is, you said it's rapid. Financial solution. Yes. So, did you do any research on any other companies besides Rapid? I did not because I don't know if there's any other company that's doing this actually. Because I always like to try to be competitive to yeah. see, you know, who else is out there, what what their pricing is, what their structure is. Um, so, I can do that. I, I would like for you okay. to. Okay. I, I would just in, in fairness and curiosity. Okay. Um, the the second they come to our clerk meetings. I bet and, they do. And then and there's no <laughs> other company that comes with it. So. I, I, I bet. I bet. Yeah. Yeah. You go with who you see and I and I understand that. Right. Um and the um but I, I applaud you for doing that. Thank yeah. you. I, I think I have a check that I've never cashed from you. Guys. So I'm probably one of those that you, yeah, I know. I, I gotta wait you. on you five yeah. years. <laughs> it's just past five years. Yeah. Um, the, um, the other thing that I, I wanted to ask you is in dealing with um, the, the company, I didn't get a chance to see the agreement, um, Ken or Jennifer, because it's not attached. So I wasn't able to, to read any verbiage or to see. I probably didn't attach it. I have given it to um, the Madam Chair to look at. Madam Chair to look at, yeah. We can try it down the circle. Yeah, it's a good I'm a reader, so I like to read okay. it. So okay. I would like to see it. Okay. But good job, Tim. Thank you Thank for you. paying attention. Yeah, and being a forward thinker and getting us into the 21st That's century. Right. That's right. <laughs> to do stuff better. Okay. I said they can't outdo us, our neighboring counties. <laughs> okay. Okay. okay, thank you. Commissioner. Guider. Yes, thank you. Hey, Tammy. So how do they use the cards? Do they use the like Debit cards yes. for any store? Yes, gas, anything, groceries. You just zip it through and then. Um, <coughs> and if they want to pay a bill with it, they can register the card online. And, you know, there's all different ways with the brochure. But they can deposit it into their check. I think they can. Oh, they can. I think they can. Uh, but it's all on the little brochure that we'll hand them when we scan the card. All that information is there. 
Now, uh, when I was a tax commissioner <coughs> after five years, we had to turn that any unclaimed funds over to the state of Georgia. We do too. So your money may be in the state of Georgia. <laughs> yeah, we have to do that too. Uh, but we have to hold we it don't for like five to years. Do that. Yeah. It's a shame that we can't keep that <coughs> ourselves and then if anybody comes forth exactly. after five years then we can just make it good. Mm -hmm. uh, we need to change that law. <laughs> um, and that's a lot of work because you've got to research and well, oh, yeah, <coughs> you have to trace, track them down because they move and everything. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, thank you. Thank you. All right, any other questions? Any questions? Any questions? Any questions? Yes. Hello, madam. How are you? Fine. No, it's good to see you. I don't get to see you that much. Um, <laughs> I lay low. <laughs> it, it, no, but, but you, you play a, a very, very important role. Um, obviously, in this county, very, um, it's all about efficiency. It's all about records. It's, you, you, your team is uh, unsung heroes and heroes Thank you. and all Thank of that. You. And um, respectfully, now I, I know what you do down there, and I just like, y'all get the volume. Do y'all understand that everything about government is records? And so we're, I appreciate that. So to that point, and, and you just keeping up with it, you make it look easy, and people like, I got it. My, 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 my question is, I would like the administration on our side to provide a little bit more support and help her through this process, right? That she says, <coughs> while she can, in her you know, constitutionality, make choices per se, I think we could have provided a little bit more, like well, we could walk you through that process and figure out the right um, vendor or whatever the case may be. So I guess my question is, there's a, at least a, a question of, um, is this the right provider? Uh, I don't know if it's a single source or not, uh, but how, how fast do you have to move? And I, I'm not opposed to pausing, but also I'm not opposed to making a decision uh, per se. Mm -hmm. I'm just curious because again, I, I mean, you're, you, you've got an operation to run and, 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 and really that's all you do. And we as general government are, provide, are supposed to provide a shared services across everybody who wants it. I know sometimes people want their own little victims, but I appreciate where we can provide value, we can. So, I mean, it's an honest question, but it's not put you on the spot. I mean, do you need more time? I mean, what, what is your intent? What do you need this to go live for? I didn't have a particular date. I was hoping we could start by, you know, September, because it'll take the vendor a little bit to get our banking information and stuff. But um, September. We can, I can research some more companies that I'm just, Probably takes the first thing. I, I, I'm just I'm throwing it out there for my peers to say there may be some time, uh, but, but not too much. But I'm, I'm not saying pause tomorrow, Madam Chair. It was just more of a I, I hear you know is there to, to your point you have plenty of vendors that approach everybody from transportation you know probably the fire IT everybody else we, we understand how it works so it's not a bad thing uh, we're, just, we're providing cover you we're for you so. Right. Your call down here. I, I guess I worry about the um, mm -hmm. the fraud on the account just last week, three checks. Yeah, you're trying to move it. One was fifteen hundred dollars. So that's a lot. <laughs> that's a big question. <laughs> okay, then I'll be like, Madam Carson, I understand what you're trying to do by way of overall policy and purchasing for the county. Uh, perhaps you go offline and if you get a little bit more comfortable, let us, you know, by tomorrow and if you need more time or you see I mean follow your lead. Okay. I yield, Madam Chair. Okay. And I just have one, one okay. question. So we give the we put the money into an account, into an account, and we give Rapid Financial the ability to pull the money from the account to yes. the accounts. <coughs> Do they also have the ability to go back into the, the account, like to put money back into the account if they or, or to let let's just say probably not probably not. Okay. We get the money from uh, Terry Davidson upstairs in finance. She borrows the money into our account, so I don't have. Any money in that account until they, we tell Jennifer every, I'm not Jennifer, I'm, I'm looking at that Jennifer and that, and that Jennifer. Um, when I say I have 200 jurors mm -hmm. and I need $15,000 and then I let them know, we, give, we used to give them the check numbers mm -hmm. and they would put exactly the checks that we wrote and put that in our account. Now I will run a report from Rapid mm -hmm. and it will tell me whoever was a juror, if you were a juror, mm -hmm. that you got $70 put on that card. Mm -hmm. So we can run a report and we will be able to verify okay. all of these were jurors, we gave these jurors this amount of money, and so they will they will still put the money in there and then Rapid will pull it out. Okay. I just want to, to make sure the security, the back and forth exactly. from coming in and out of the accounts. That's and you guys nobody can get this brochure if somebody in my office grabbed one, uh -huh. it's not going to work. Because gotcha. it has to be tied, and I, Sabrina, I asked Sabrina to come up 
uh, from finance to see how we worked on Monday morning with jurors. Uh -huh. And it has to be tied to that juror. Okay. So it, and because mm -hmm. we're going to be paying them through the jury program mm -hmm. and with a bar number, so they'll be they'll be matched. Gotcha. And I see if the client, if the juror doesn't spend it within 120 days, and they start, they start yes. taxing that. So we will call. tell them as soon as we do that. Okay, gotcha. You, you better spend your money sure. first. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> they start getting charged for it. All right. I yield back. Thank but you. I will check. I will check. I will do that this afternoon. Okay. Okay. Are you um, if, if, if we can hold off for until the next that's fine. committee meeting. Okay. That's okay. exactly okay. fine. We'll That'll allow you to, to research uh, yeah. and yeah. then we'll go from yeah. Madam Chair, let me just point this out. Tammy could have entered this contract without us because she's a constitutional right. officer, but she likes working with the county and to the extent that she wants to do that, that's great, but I just wanted to point that out. Mm -hmm. <coughs> so you can enter this without us. So we just wanted to make that clear to you guys. You know, y'all know me. I'm a team player. <laughs> so you want to wait until the next? I can. I don't mind. Okay, then. I I've waited two years. <laughs> okay. I tried it two years ago. In, our, in other words, I didn't come this far. And you can do your due diligence to make sure that you're complete with your decision. Okay. All right. I'm absolutely fine. And I, I'm okay. sorry. But other than that, you know it's your decision. Yes. Okay. Yeah. I yeah. yeah, I you know, and I appreciate that. I was just leaning over to Madam Chair telling her that to, to we, we acknowledge the fact that she's a constitutional and that's why I made my comment earlier. Um that, you know, and I was getting like, well just add up the volume and see how much does it call fall within the fifty thousand and twenty five thousand. So it was it's it's we, we just we are trying to get better. Right? Something that's never been done. I not I was being sensitive to uh, Commissioner Carthen, you know, um, reforming our, our purchasing um, and some of our policies and stuff. So we're working through ours. Um, by all means, we recognize who you are, but I, we weren't trying to over administrate either, be an overburden and respect. You, it sounds like you've talked to all the finance. Y'all are working day to day. This was just sort of a mechanism like, okay, this is not that, but still, thank you for your patience. We, we got you. We, we, we know what you do. And that's my whole point share services. She shouldn't have to go through this. We should have, like, done been on this. So. That's my point, Madam Chair. So we're good. I'm okay. happy. I Thank got you. it. Okay, you're Thank welcome. You. We're good. Thank you. And this is off the agenda, but I know I wanted to mention. Oh, yeah. I can't leave without mentioning Miss Hazel Burton. Uh, everybody knows Miss Burton is my office manager, and her husband passed away Friday. Um, so I just wanted everyone to know that um, keep her in your thoughts and prayers. And the visitation is going to be Friday um, from four to six at New Mountain Top Baptist Church. And the funeral's going to be Saturday at 1 at the church at New Mountain Top Baptist. <coughs> so y'all just keep her in your prayers. Okay. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you so much, uh, Security Clerk, Clerk uh, Howard. All right, we'll move to tab number 9, authorization to approve an agreement with the Douglas County School System to finance an additional DARE officer for the elementary schools to address drug awareness to be funded by the Douglas County School System and authorize the chairman to sign all related documents. Major Holmes. <laughs> um, we, uh, the DARE program used to be in the school system of the county. It's been about probably 2006 since it was Gone, had gone away and we went to another program called BLAST, which is a life skills program. Um, recently, we had some changes and promotions at the sheriff's office uh, where a lady named Susan Swift promoted to a lieutenant. She's actually a nationally known DARE instructor and uh, their program has always been <coughs> good in there. All of our life skills people will be going to teaching DARE. They're going to a training this summer and we are going when school starts back, back to the DARE program. I think that is an excellent move uh, by, the, by us to do that. Um, but in, in the uh, agreements with that, the school system agreed to add one additional person and pay for them to be an additional DARE officer. So we're actually adding one. The ones we have now that are class, I believe there's four of them, will be trained in DARE. And so they'll be a total, I think, of five. Any questions from the board? We move to the next one, tab number 10, authorization to renew the contract for administrative solutions for the administration of inmate medical claims and inmate reinsurance for the period of July 1st, 2019 through July 30th, I'm sorry, through June 30th, 2020, and authorize the chairman to sign all related documents subject to final uh, legal review. Major Holmes. Uh, this is the contract with Janie Floyd with administrative solutions that we have at the jail dealing with the inmates that are taken away from the building and, and uh, hospital stays, doctor visits, things of that nature. She's the one that does all the billing and makes sure everything's uh, taken care of at the proper rate. 
This year's contract is at the daily per inmate daily amount is still the same as it was last year at 41 cents per inmate. But the daily count of inmates is actually down from last year's contract. That's why it's a little bit less than last year's contract. Okay. Any other questions from the board? Okay, go on to the next one. Tab number 11, authorization to accept a check in the amount of $4,900.05 from the Douglas County Sheriff's Office by order of the Douglas County Superior Court as abandoned property. Major Holmes again. This is the latest. We do these periodically throughout the year. Obviously, since y'all noticed, I've done a couple of them recently, but uh, this is another abandoned property order we got through Superior Court, and the auction went down on June 10th. And here is the check that I'm going to present with finance a little bit of that amount. Okay. Any questions from the board? Okay, I'll move on to the next one. Tab number 12, authorization. And we have a correction on uh, number 12, uh, Board of Commissioners. It says authorization to approve a contract with Edwin Ford as senior civilian chaplain with the Douglas County Sheriff's Office with a salary <coughs> not to exceed. Your paper, your document says 35000 but it's not to, see, to exceed 40000 annually and authorize the chairman to sign all related documents pending legal review. Major Holmes. Ma Madam Chair, I'm going to take this up for Bobby since I spoke to the sheriff and I do want to point out Bobby's new grandfather this weekend so he's probably tired. <laughs> oh, congratulations. So Thank I know you. he's excited. Um, I, I spoke to the sheriff uh, about this particular uh, agreement. The sheriff wanted to be not to exceed 40 as a vendor and uh, no benefits. It's just a straight, uh, I guess, con subcontract agreement for him to provide ministerial services. The sheriff will not supervise the actual ministerial acts that Reverend Ford will uh, administer. But Reverend Ford is agreeing to comply with their security protocols and regulations over there. I will tell you it's a close call from a legal perspective about how, how it's being treated vendor or non-vendor. But the sheriff's going to do this. And so I have drawn it up, and that's what we're doing. He, he too comes to y'all, as he can enter this agreement without y'all, but I think as a comedy to y'all, he's asked to put it on the agenda. Mm -hmm. But I spoke to uh, Sheriff Pounds myself, and this is what he wants, <coughs> and I just wanted to make sure y'all were aware of that, and it is 40, not 35. Okay, thank you. Any questions from the board? Sure. Yeah, no, I, I appreciate, you know, again, we always get into the constitutional officers, and it's, Sort of like on a national level, like what, what you never want anybody to do, that, that there's not a check and balance. We are legislators at the local level. We're looking at those people who are executing, providing the public service in such a way that you need some degree of visibility. I'm real careful, and I keep hearing in there where they can do what they want, and you can, but we appreciate the atmosphere that's <coughs> created that allowed us to just, just check it. Nobody's trying to be corrupt, corroded, crooked, anything like that. So this ensures that we all have a little insight, a little confidence in our government. You know, when people start getting in their own worlds, in their own islands, and their own, they want to secede, you know, secede from society and be in there, you know, it's like, well, that's sort of dangerous. I don't know what you're doing over there, but the fact that you give courtesy to let us know and let us in on sort of what's going on, it makes the system work. We're not trying to overthrottle and, and run them. Uh, no way. We're just trying to make them get sufficient as, as we do this. So I appreciate that. Again, we're just talking about uh, a, a chaplain, but at least we have some degree of visibility to, to, to our, our county change point. We have some degree, like, who's really over there um, and, and what's really happening and stuff. Because, again, it's the shadow government that gets, gets this is to the public. I, I know firsthand, it's, you need this. Like, I'm, I'm behind the veil. I actually can see what happens and how things flow. And so, trust me, you will always want to have visibility. You always want, n never accept, they don't have to be transparent. Never accept that. That, that. That's important. So I get power, but it must always yield to the people and their right to know. And just to watch us go through a process that keeps things at least reasonably clean and that we can see going on. So I, I, I commend um, the atmosphere that Douglas County is doing to keep the point that we have historically always allowed this. But I never want to get away from that. And I want to emphasize the point that, no, guys, this is good. Let's not ever get away when we start creating people in their minds that, well, I don't have to come before, like, to the public. You don't never want to do that. And if you see anybody who wants to take that position, you need to remind them of how this process works. Executive, legislators, co-branches working together. Thank you. 
Thank you. Thank you. Madam Chair. Yes. One thing for uh, this been pointed out, uh, the on tab, uh, tab 12, we need to replace the words with a salary not to exceed 35. It needs to be for a professional fee of 40,000 annually. Okay. Uh, yeah, I'll get releases and make sure okay. that's correct. But okay. yes, he's not technically a salaried employee. Okay. Thank you for clarifying. All right, thank you, uh, Vice Chairman Robinson, also for your comment. Thank you so much, Major Hall. I'm going to move on to the next item. So the next item is tab number 13, authorization to approve <coughs> task order 2019-6 with the Atlanta Coast Consultant in the amount of $10,000 for the purpose of procurement evaluation support for privatization, solid waste services, and authorize the chairman to sign all related documents. Uh, Director Jenkins. Thank you, and still good morning. Good morning. Hey there. Okay, we're back again. We're still grinding on our uh, ability to make a decision on what we're going to do with our landfill mm -hmm. transfer station. The whole situation is quite a undertaking. It has been for the last two or three years, but it's not impossible. To, like I told y'all the last time I was here, a lot of changes going on in the waste business. The advanced disposal, we had a contract with Cobb got bought out by waste management. The waste Industries is right up here on Bankhead got bought out by a recycling company out of Canada. And I'm certainly not a lifetime solid waste person, but uh, I've never seen it like this, moving around. And so <clears throat> here we are. Uh, what we was trying to do is started off with the finance committee that said, you know, we'd like to look into this and see what's out there see if there's any interest in it. We had uh, four proposers, two of them being international companies and two of them being U.S. companies. So it's pretty big time. Uh, a lot of money out there. When that happens, there's a lot of uh, opportunity for somebody to say, I didn't get a fair deal. So this $10,000 is for ACC to hire an independent consultant that will oversee the evaluation process as well as we already got two letters out there with I can't tell you how many questions we had for them but uh, the ten thousand dollars covers us from the transparency so the standpoint <coughs> on through helping us come up with the companies that we think would be a good fit for us however I'll say it again that uh, might need to wait this deal out a little bit that things settle down some in the industry. Not required. I'm just saying it. it's pretty it's pretty like the Wild West out there, I guess is what I'm trying to say. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, any questions from Paul or comments uh, Vice Chairman Robinson? Sure. Uh, um, uh, greetings. Um, we did speak recently we did. Um, regarding the landfill. Um, I obviously have to board commission always try to stay close to what's really happening so those interim conversations. So We've got a landfill privatization. Yes, the industry is um, consolidating, recalibrating, but, but that's any industry. It's very big, it's very cities and thin margins, uh, uh, but it's, it's massive. Um, and it, it's just, it's, it's the nature of the beast. Uh, this $10,000 is just, uh, appears to be just a, a consulting agreement to come in here and help us what? Reframe our next step. Is that really what the goal is? You're asking me to. I say it's to evaluate the existing proposals we have. That's right. right. That's okay, so yes, so we, we as opposed to us doing listen, as opposed to us evaluating internally, we believe we need somebody more seasoned to take a look at, and facilitate this process. Is that correct? I think I was looking at it more from a transparency standpoint. Okay. I didn't want somebody to come back and say, We all gave the contract to this guy for thirty nine dollars a ton. I would have done it for twenty nine dollars a ton. Uh, no, I, uh, no, this is important because, again, we know this is the enterprise fund. It's a standalone, but it's massive, right? That's now, right. Policy-wise, purchasing, internally, we have a lot of major contracts that are awarded <laughs> offline, maybe not through committee. Um, it, 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 it's back to consistency. Now, I appreciate what you just said. It's like being transparent. I want some help. I don't even want to touch this to your point with comment I just made. Like, y'all know how this money moves around this county? But I appreciate what you just said. Well, I want to be transparent. I know this is going to be a lot of state with this. And we're talking about privatizing a moderate sized county. I mean, listen to what he just said. Like, no, I hear you. And I'm emphasizing this so the public can hear it. 
and I appreciate um, and I'm sure that this is probably a very appropriate move. I know people always ask, well, why we got to spend money on consulting? Well, like, okay, no, sometimes you want to just keep it clean, get it right. Um, and so I just wanted to highlight that. It wasn't put, you know, I'm not putting you on the spot because we talked about this, but I, I appreciate on this one, uh, there's a lot at stake with this. You're talking about privatizing a land bill. You want to get this one right. So I just wanted to make that emphasis, Madam Chair, and um, yeah, I support the moment. Okay. Any other comments for the board? All right, thank you so much. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Jenkins. We're going to move on to uh, tab number 14, authorization to accept the Family Connections Grant <coughs> amount of, um, award in the amount of $50,000 over the period of July 1st, 2019 through June 20th, 2020, and, off and authorization of a contract with Douglas Core and authorize the chairman to sign all related documents and amend the budget. Jennifer Katie, good morning. <coughs> yes, ma'am. This is. Um, the grant from Family Connections that goes to um, our core group. Um, the contract has been worked on and everything's ready for the, the grant money to go um, straight to Douglas Core. Okay. Any questions from the board? We tabled this, right? So this is a previous, I just want to highlight, this is a previous business that we're bringing for, right? Old yes. business? Okay. Mm -hmm. I just want to make sure. No, technically, no. We didn't right. table it in a board meeting. We just, just, we just took it, it off the agenda and worked it. All right, but we did discuss the public state. We, we talked yes. okay. right. talk about it. We took no formal action. It just never made that. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay, all right. Thank you. No, I, that was. All right. Um, but you're comfortable? Everything's lined up? Yes, everything is lined up. Perfectly. Everything's lined up. <laughs> I, I just, we heard the wheels. <laughs> yeah, 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 go. Peace, peace, Wusa. We're good. We're good. Okay, yes, we're good. Yes, okay, yes, well, I'm going to move on to the, the next tab. The next tab is holding up. Tab number 15. <laughs> Authorization to accept the grant from the Criminal Justice Coordinating Council for the Juvenile Justice Incentive Grant in the amount of $209,551 with no required matching funds for the grant for the school year beginning July 1st, 2019 through June 30th, 2020, and authorize the chairman to sign all related documents and amend, amend the budget as necessary. Jennifer King. Yes, ma'am. This is also a grant that we receive um, yearly. We've gotten, I think, for about six years. Uh, and this funds some of our youth programming through the court system. Okay, any questions for the board? Pretty self-explanatory. <laughs> Thank you, sir. <so> <coughs> A nice one. <coughs> just skip a little bit before I go to 16. Okay. Previous question? Yes. Before you skip. All right. Back up real quick to the prior <laughs> one. Uh, no, no. I just want to make sure, just this, this, this is broadly, um, who will get the grant? Is it going through? Have y'all created? What's the entity? I'm, I'm not trying to lead it somewhere. But what will be the entity that this gets passed through to? I'm sorry. Which, which one? The previous question. The previous number um, talking okay. about Cold. family connection. That will be going to Douglas Core. Douglas Core. <coughs> Organization, yes, not oh. to a person, but to Douglas Core. All right, Douglas Core, and the execution of um, that service um, or that the execution of that is inherent within that agreement between or, or tied to that grant. Is that accurate? Yes, it is. Yes. Any services will be invoiced back. So we invoice back. And the reporting, and this, my, my director, Mr. Hallman knows them. It's more of just a reporting. Um, it goes across, is it salary, support, just one more time, salary, or just any operational part of that, right? Um, the, the grant allows them to spend it on whatever they that's want what I to thought. spend it. Uh, so whatever the they invoices want. come to us to process, and okay. um, that's the only. Us is you, or us is the county. Jennifer? Okay, the county. Director Hallman. Okay, I can catch you from there. I'm okay. good. Thank okay. you, Madam Chair. Thank, Thank you. you. <laughs> we'll move to 17 and then we'll come back to 16. Uh, tab number 17 is authorization to accept a check from the Douglas County <coughs> Law Library in the amount of $174.49 for repair of a courtroom Mundo pad. Director Holman. Uh, yes, ma'am. Uh, according to Judge Emerson, the law library bought a number of Mondo pads for the courtrooms. One of the computers died, and the vendor in focus will uh, charge $175 to fix it, and they require payment by credit card. 
Um, so the funds are actually coming from the law library to reimburse the county <coughs> for the uh, charge on the credit card to fix the uh, computer. Okay. Any questions from the board? Question on Rob's computer. Those mine. You talking about something like that? Mm -hmm. Yeah, from other things. These cards, they're expensive. Huh? We got to pay to fix something. <coughs> that is, I mean, how? I mean, there's not a warranty or something that they should just come. Why am I paying? I mean, I don't care. I mean, once we're not, I'm fine. I'm, I'm just curious as to why would they just fix it? Uh, it's not under warranty. I don't have that. I don't, I don't have the details either. Right, so we just we pay somebody just to come out and fix it. Then that's, listen, we just we'll pay somebody to come fix something. I'm, 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 I guess. Can we find out by tomorrow? Do we have those machines under warranty first? And second, how long ago did, did, did were they purchased? Um, I, sometimes all I hear is about, you know, I'm, I'm gonna push the Clark Howard, you know, about the difference between buying service agreements and warranties. I mean, I'm, but I, I'm, it just be, it begs the question like, well, wait a minute, he bought multiple. That's a nice pop for somebody. And you gonna, and it died. And if it's only been a couple of years, which I think it, 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 I know it ain't been over two years. Right. Then why am I paying this fee? Can you just answer that? Find that Absolutely. out for me tomorrow. Just not to slow, slow it down, I'm sure. We, we got to get it done. But right. thank you. Yes, sir. Okay. We're going to move to last but not least. Yep. It would be tab 16 because I've come to the clock. And it is authorization to approve a supplemental agreement uh, number five with Michael Baker International Corporation in the amount of $152,804.09 for additional design services in connection with the Lee Road Phase 2 widening project P1000442 to be funded through the 2016 SPLOST funds and authorized the chairman to sign all related documents. And this was then, this actually was tabled from uh, June 18, 2018. And our director, Valentin, if you could expound further. Uh, <clears throat> yes, good morning, Madam Chair and morning. Commissioners. This item uh, has been discussed several times, uh, <clears throat> both at the committee level and uh, at the board. And the, the last issue that we have to make a decision on to be able to move that process forward is where the funding is going to be pulled from to fund this uh, additional uh, design effort. As you might recall, uh, in order to take the project off the shelf as the Georgia DOT refers to and uh, get it into the program for delivery within a year's time, uh, we have to then go back to the original designer uh, who is most familiar with the project to update the plans and the environmental documents. And the last recommendation uh, at, at the uh, Transportation Committee was that the funding be pulled from the 2016 Economic Development Category, uh, SPLOST, uh, uh, to fund a project. So um, essentially, that is the, the last remaining hurdle for the board to grapple with. Any questions? Robinson. Yeah, I, I want to acknowledge the fact that this, this was, had been talked about in Transportation Committee. Um, I, I think um, it was taken off the agenda because one of the things we, we try to establish is unless something is exigent, we just never, we don't want to, uh, as opposed to the prior administration, things got shotgunned. We, we believe it was important that, no, if a committee comes after work session, don't roll that right into a decision sometimes. I mean, sometimes it's immaterial, but it's just a courtesy. Um, and so my, my, my agreement to sort of pause on this wasn't that I was not in the room agreeing that this was appropriate. It was just a fact of the process that like, no, give people time. Don't just shotgun them. If, it, if it's a timing issue, then we should do a better job of planning upstream so knowing that that date is gonna hit. So that's to all directors. Let's just, don't, don't put us in that place where we have to sit there and, and, and sort of, you know, it, it's not necessary. It's an unnecessary friction that, that's, that, that sometimes we have. <coughs> Uh, unintentional consequences, but I do support this. I do agree. We did discuss it. Um, it came out of committee that it should come out of economic development. Um, I stand with my uh, district one and district three commissioners who wanted to keep this thing moving because obviously we've allocated the five million and six million, eleven million, and now we've got to take um, obviously uh, additional money to for the design to get this on track. So what we don't want to do again, had we if we've been shovel ready last time we probably would have done this for half the cost. So think about it. We, it, it could have been, what, $10 million, now it's $21 million. That means we had to pull $11 million out of the current SPLOS and 
that's 11 million cash because of a mistake, um, inefficiency from times past that we could have been used in somewhere else. And so that's um, how important it is. I appreciate you keeping this on task, but keep us clean, please. All right. I you. Thank you. Um, Commissioner Geiger? Yes. Um, <clears throat> I was the one that asked for it not to be shoved through. <laughs> but um, the economic development category falls below. Um, streets and bridges and intersections and operations. So how do we know we're going to have No, technically they all are together. Okay, well it's listed. It's listed below it, but no, they all run parallel. They're at the same time. But we took, uh, we took six million out of the economic development um, funds, but we don't know that we're going to have 10 million to put in there, do we? <coughs> I mean, we Based don't know. Based on the numbers we right now, know, we do. We don't know that we're going to be able to fund all these other projects for to put ten million in the economic. Based on the account. numbers we have right now, there will be ten million in the economic. So all these other projects above there is going to be completed too. No, way. they're not above it. They they run parallel with it. There's different categories in transportation. But I mean, above the line, above the line, these should be be funded. Before ten million is put here, is no, that not true? That's not true. So they run, they run together. So the intersections <coughs> and sidewalk upgrades, economic development, the resurfacing, they all they are separate categories within transportation that have their own priority list. And so all four of those categories, you're working down in the category. So the categories only have each one has a certain amount of money allotted. <coughs> <laughs> but it's if the funds are available on all of them. Yes, that's correct. So we don't. How do we know we're going to have ten million in economic development? Based on the numbers we have right now and the trends, we will have ten million. So now at this point, after this one seventy four, we would have a balance of approximately two million in the economic development category, which is twenty percent of that category. But my, my biggest objection is six million was put into the Lee Road from the economic development. And then what five million from Annie Wakey or something like that. Yeah, I can't remember which one was which, but but I mean, but uh, <coughs> to me any overage should come out of that money. Because it's already been allocated. We've shifted the money around. Because every time you take money out of a splot, out of a splosh um, that you don't know is going to be there, it pushes all the other projects down, and it's jeopardizing projects in your district, my district, and Henry Mitchell's district. It should come out of the economic money that's already already been set aside. It should not. It's just like the Interstate West. <coughs> Um, Painting. It was not on the splash list to begin with. Never was on the list. And you said it was the right thing to do, which you think it is, but I don't think it was the right thing to do. It should have come out of your allocation, just like unless we all get eighty thousand or a hundred and twenty thousand dollars to spend in our district. Why should why should something come out of splash? that has not been on the squash list for, to begin with. That, that's not transparent. That is not transparent. And this should come out of the money that has been set aside for the Lee Road. Remember, Lee Road was not on the list either. It was not on the splash list either. But it was discussed as part of the economic development category. Okay, and we've shifted that money over there. Well, any over it should come out. Any over should come out of the money that's already been set aside for the road. And then at the end of the road, if, if more money's needed, that's when we should address it. But for right now, it's just shoving our, our projects lower, pushing it down. And Lee Road was not originally on the list. And I just feel like... Uh, Sometimes we get a little complacent with, you know, we'll just 
pull the money out of splash, pull it out of splash. But every time we do, it jeopardizes projects in the other districts. Mm -hmm. And that was <coughs> my main objection. It said on the agenda, it said out of splash funds. It didn't say which splash funds. It didn't say economic development funds or whatever. But since money has already been set aside in the tune of $11 million from Lee Road, um, I think that's where the money should come from. Rather than just continuously hitting the general splash fund. Right. Mm -hmm. And I yield back. Okay. Awesome. Yield yeah. back. Yeah. yeah, just real quick. Well, I, I, I appreciate it. Um, <clears throat> yeah, we, we all have different views. And at the end of the day, it's the general, it's the consensus of the board. There's always the leaning. This boss was created in such a way that went for categories. The prior majority knew what it was doing. We were part of that. It's the majority. You framed this boss that went to a referendum. Ten million was allocated um, for economic development with no legal, I don't want to say legal meaning, it was not in the referendum on how it's to be spent. So when we try to create rules as we go, well, we're all rule makers. It's like, no, that's not how that went down. That's not how that went down. The $10 million that was allocated was really part of my caps for it. Like for my vote, I want 40 million. And just like yesterday, they gave me 10. They gave me 10. 40 million, think about now how it's like Jennifer, it would like, we would kill the whole thing, but they gave 10 million to the district too. That was for my vote. But the second time, I, vo I voted down Fox Hall, but they needed my cover. Second time around, pay attention. <coughs> Ten million is in District Two. I had no problem sharing it with my colleagues spread right across that <coughs> road. It's all economic development. You can get into all that all you want to. It was clear what that was about. So I let staff they come up. We can take it out of economic development. It's like okay, it's for a greater good. It's three districts. It's, it's we get what it's about. Not a problem. But this is not about like it's just being cherry picked. One more time, if the mistake had not been made, we'd have been further along with this. We're not gonna take the hit for prior mishandling, prior, <coughs> don't let me go there, on that whole Lee Road. We're having to make up for a very, I mean, almost criminal, if I really wanted to push that. We had to take a, we had to take, in our, take a hit in our financials. We had to restate. And you're going to complain about 125 to get this back on track when we asked him to get this fixed? We had to clean up the mess from the prior administration as it relates to this project. The DOT leadership in the past was just like, no, we can't sit here and make it seem like all of a sudden we're doing something wrong or that it, it, it's like we're trying to fix something. And we appreciate you, Miguel. We, we get it. Again, you know how that got turned sideways and it wasn't for that, you know. But, but still, this has got to move forward, but let's not drain on this as if, okay, we're going to spend another 125. Well, all of it is in there. All of it originally was supposed to be for Thorn Road Master Plan, 21 million. So we've made some decisions, and we get the right to do that. We're not, you can't <coughs> bind our choices, our decisions on how we think. We're, unless, like Tom used to come to me, try to put in writing, I'm free. And if the board sits here, and they're saying they changed their mind, and they want to reprioritize based on what they see because the law does not tell us and the referendum does not tell us that we can't do this, then until you put some rules, like the, the state legislature has rules committees and they have rules that are written that says that we have to do it a certain way, we're making this up as we go. So then it does become just your view versus our view. It's just like, okay, well, I, I, I respect it. I do respect you. I, I do respect what you're saying, but I, I'm always going to counter when there's a narrative that runs like counter to what the truth is. And that's not what this was. And, and this is not how this went down. But the 125 is needed to move this project along, to fix a mess that we had to take a, a financial restatement on my financials. I, you talk about didn't do their job. 
if I really went, that's like that's what I'm saying. Do I really have to go there? And I, and I, I want to be. I'm glad this was last because it, it puts a like really, like sometimes you gotta look yourself in the mirror and, and look at the own your own behavior as it relates to like wow really. Listen, so we're really trying to make this good for the whole. And so, Miguel, I'm looking at you because I, I, I do appreciate this. And so uh, let's move this forward um, and, and really, you know, for the, the greater good. Uh, thank you for the effort of recalibrating this, bringing this forward from 2028 to get it to where it was. I mean, you really had to work some stuff. And so, yeah, it takes another 125. There's been plenty of projects that have come here where we've had to add a little bit more, add a little bit more. I mean, we can go down the list, add a little bit more because we, oh, the scope is off. Oh, we got to add a little bit more. As long as you, again, the point was having a public conversation. That was my only point. In other words, I would not have taken it off the agenda had it not, uh, not the fact that you, you get the point. In other words, the second, I wouldn't have picked up my second, but it was a different principle. But you get my point that just, just, just be clean and clear and, and allow, the, because it's a lot of money. And it is, transportation does consume a lot. And I think we have to be sensitive. It consumes. It's one of the biggest things. And so I want to be sensitive to that. So uh, I'm good on that. You get it, Miguel. We good? We're good. All right. Thank you. Commissioner Guider. The referendum was on percentages. 32% for fire and EMS, 51% transportation, 17% parks and rec. Nowhere does it say economic development was for District 2, which was just stated. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, it was for the, and only three projects were listed under that, and that was Riverside Parkway, Street Lights, Lee Road <coughs> Extension Study, and Riverside Parkway uh, Traffic Light. Uh, nowhere did it say Lee Road anything. So this came about after the fact, after everybody had voted and everything. But I'm just saying it's not just his to spend. Splash money is not just his to spend. Uh, the Interstate West that was paid in the minutes it said 132000 You quoted 80000 Which one was it? Well, initially we had an estimate that was higher. But the actual expenditure, we, we knew there was going to be the possibility for some savings. The actual expenditure to date has been a little less than 90,000, 89,000 or so for the paving, and we have another 12,000 or so for the striping yet to be done. So it'll be about 101,000 total. But where's now, the money coming from? Well, it, for it, that, because it was not on any street list. It, it was not on anybody's street list, right? Understood. It, it, was, it was not on the final list, but it was on the preliminary list, along with Lee Road. Uh, you might recall that the, that the three million allocation for resurfacing, for, to be divided amongst the, the four districts, uh, there is a half a million, uh, 500,000 or so allocated as a match for, for the uh, ELMI program. So that leaves 2,500. If you allocate <coughs> that four ways, is $625,000 per district. The cost to do the resurfacing on Lee Road <coughs> came in at about 455000 So adding another 101000 uh, for the Interstate West, which was originally on the list but got taken off because of the estimate, brings it under the $625,000 allocation per district. So essentially the expenditure for both of those roads. So the list that was handed out to us was incorrect? It was not incorrect in the sense that, that we had an estimate for what we thought it would cost and Interstate West would not have fit within that estimate. But as the expenditures became clearer, it was it became more obvious that yes, we it could fit within the overall. I'm just saying that we need to stick to the procedures as closely as possible and not just let someone take out funds just for their projects. It needs to follow the guidelines. We have eleven million in the Lee Road. Uh, project. 
that has been transferred from two different other projects. Mm -hmm. Anything that pertains to Lee Road should come out of that. And it should not just be a, a bucket that someone can just pull $152,000 out of at their, their pleasure. And I yield back. Okay, thank you so much for your okay. credit. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Uh, no, I, I appreciate Miguel, and again, I had to step away. I couldn't, I couldn't hold, but I, I appreciate the commentary. And this is not about me. We, we, we've got a committee structure, and you, you're, you're the lead, and we, we've got a pretty good um, structure. Um, it's filmed, uh, which is something that um, it was important that any decision that wants to be challenged in how the narrative, everything is recorded, so they can follow it. And so I don't want it to be. Um, such that, that any one person took something out. It's a committee. It's public. Um, and, I, and sometimes I hear, you know, sometimes people are in office for power. Some people are in office to get stuff done. Things are not linear in government. When you have, like earlier today, we had um, a tax incentive request. <coughs> Companies come from the left or right, and it's not part of the plan. What do you do? You call an audible. You reset priorities. We don't have to stick to this, right? We, could, we have discretion. If we put something in place that says not to exceed, then that's that. But when we have chances, even then, we can make decisions at a board of commissioners. It's our discretion. The law doesn't say we don't have to do it that way. We do have public debate. Again, I'm sure I appreciate your committee structure because I think we probably would be in a different place in the old way. This is very structured, very transparent, very open. Um, and you, you can change your mind. You can do it. But I look at, you know, when we talk about the whole uh, Interstate West, no, it wasn't on the list. This man just dropped two hotels that couldn't get done somewhere else and did a very good job. And so he's like, I need a little help. I'm not asking you to build my roads or anything. I just want you to pay out front of this. Two hotels. And, and so sometimes as a board, we have to say, okay, come in, bring it through. Can y'all make this work for this person? And it's open, and it's yes or no. But to, to suggest that, you know, it, it may feel that way, and I get it, and sometimes I sit back, but when I look at District 4 sometimes, I'm like, hey, you know what, I'm advocating for y'all. I, 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 no, no. I, I, no. If you wanna get in a mud fight, we'll get in a mud fight. No, it's not, it's, it's not mud. No, don't, don't get it wrong. I said when I talk about it, it it's, it's the suggestion. It's not mud. It's unwarranted. And sometimes you, it's like enough. Move on versus being a broken record. Advocate to get stuff done versus trying to count what Kelly's doing. It's like you talk about shade and jade, and it's like, man, do you ever focus on what you need to get done? All I try to do, and this is important, like, guys, come on, we're better than this. I, I don't I, you, you, we, I, I try to avoid it. I'm very defensive, not offensive, I, but it, it will hit back. And it's, it's stay focused. It's all for the greater good. We're advocating for you know, people who come to us, corporate citizens, non-residential, everybody's advocating. We're sitting here just trying to do a good job. That's what I'm saying. All this is like, it's amateur. It's like, man, come on, grow up. What is this? Nobody's trying to do anything wrong. Come up with narrative that you've got limited resources, you've got $10 worth of need. Get in there, find your allies. When you're in an isolation and you don't know how to work the system, you, 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 that, that's why I sit here like, well, I get enough support, whether it was Republican or Democrat. I move through this matrix in such a way that, and you're sitting here like, well, you got the same power. But it's all about over here. And that's like, come on. Do you, I do me, everybody's one vote, but make the county better. And that's what sometimes you hear me push back. It's like, come on, man. It's amateur. I think our, our narrative locally is like, it's, it's rural narrative. It's like, it needs to advance. Fight for your citizens. Advocate for the needs of the community. Come in this room, be prepared, pay attention, figure out what you need to do, 
First of all, it's, it's like, stop that. Because while you're still doing it, I'm still moving. Let's do better than that. I just asked that, and I'm sure that we, and I, you've done a good job. You really tried to keep it. But, but it's like, no, but you can't, you, you can't cut, slap, shoot, and don't think that the Second Amendment, you always hear me, that it doesn't apply. And some of the, the, the innuendo and the suggestion and, the, and implied commentary is like, man, come on, go on now. Do better. Focus on what needs to get done. If there's a true procedural issue, that's cool. But when you start talking about like some people, it's like that type, like you think I didn't hear that. That's all I got is to hear. You know, like, you know, just like you pulled me aside and grabbed me. I said, why are you touching me? On the stage, like, you know, saw it, don't ever grab me. Like, well, don't stop it. Like, I ain't mentioned you, like, don't, don't ever touch me, though. Don't ever grab me, especially because I can't see you. Know, you send a woman, like, don't touch me. But I'm saying, stop, please. Let's move this county forward. Let's do right, and we move forward. Thank you. Thank you, yes, Thank yeah. you so much, uh, uh, Director Valentine. And uh, I'm, I want us to, to see this project go forward. And, and, and Lisa, you certainly can move it to a business item. Yep. Let's move it to a business item for tomorrow. Mm -hmm. And we have several things that have been changed, such as the Whitestone culvert yeah. and also the Lee Road. So those are the things that, you know, as, as the leader of this county, I have to shift right. because I've heard the cry of my individual district commissioners regarding the areas, how long these projects have been on, on board, and we found a way to get them done. So I appreciate your statement. Some people run for power and run, others run to get things done, and I'm a get-it-done woman, and I just want to make sure we get these things done. So with that being said, I hope that we have anything else from the Board of Commissioners, and if not, I will call um, for um, executive session, and uh, attorney, do we have the need to go into it? I'll bring that to legal, real estate, and personnel, but it'll be real quick, I think. Okay, Board of Commissioners, do we have a motion to go into executive session? Second. Second. Motion and second. All in favor, please indicate by raising your hand. Aye. Take 10 minutes, and yep. I'll see y'all back in here. <laughs> Thank you so much. Uh, Board of Commissioners, do we have any other comments or questions uh, regarding this meeting? Was, I would like to just add it was a very productive meeting today, and I appreciate your time and talent that you share with us um, every two weeks. All right, if there's nothing else to come before this Board of Commissioners, this meeting is adjourned. Okay. All right. Great.